Andrea Yearwood was known for dominating in high school track races across Connecticut, like this one. When did you discover you loved track? I first started running in seventh grade. Track was really, I'm really a support system with my teammates. They were always there to uplift me when, you know, things like I'm rough. And they've always been there kind of like as a light in the dark. But instead of kudos for winning Connecticut State Championships, she and another runner, Terry Miller, got criticized for being transgender. You see, long before she began running, Andrea knew she was different. In Halloween, I remember dressing up as Cinderella when none of the other, you know, boys would. Or I just remember playing with like doll, like Barbie dolls. How old were you? Like five, six, seven, like pretty young. By middle school, she began transitioning. But Andrea's stunning victories didn't sit well with the competition. I first raced against the transgender athletes at the state open meet, and I just realized how much ahead they were of the other girls. And it was just really disappointing to see how we weren't getting the spots that we rightfully deserved after we trained so many days and so many hours a day. Alana Smith is a top runner at Danbury High School. Competition is in her blood. Her father, a former pro baseball Hall of Famer, her mother, a former elite runner herself. What does running track mean to you, do you think? It means everything to me. It gives me like a spot to just like be myself. When I go to practice, I go and I get to hang out with my friends. And then also I just love to win. But Alana says winning felt out of reach. So she joined other high school runners in a lawsuit, hoping to ban trans girls from competing against cisgendered girls like her in Connecticut. I feel like it's just strictly about biology and that it's unfair for them to compete in our category. There's a broad coalition of people from all different political persuasions that agree that the physical advantages that men and boys have over women and girls is insurmountable. Kristen Wagner is a lawyer for the Alliance Defending Freedom, a self-described conservative Christian nonprofit. They helped file the Connecticut lawsuit last year, and it marked a tipping point, sparking a nationwide debate about fairness and gender identity. In the past year and a half alone, seven states passed trans athletes bills, and 28 more have legislation in the works. It's become a conservative rallying cry. Candidate Caitlyn Jenner. All right. Let me let me get to this issue. Caitlyn Jenner, now running for governor of California, once supported trans athletes' rights to compete in the gender they identify with. But now the lifelong Republican and former Olympian has changed her position, speaking out on TMZ. This is a question of fairness. That's why I oppose biological boys who are trans competing in girl sports in school. It just isn't fair. We should be able to compete on a level playing field and the policy that we have right now is making um, biological women be sidelined in our own sport. And she's forced to compete in an, on an unfair playing field. So we're talking about equal opportunities. And under Title IX, for example, colleges give out a certain number of scholarships to women and a certain number to men. Title IX is the federal law that forbids educational programs from discriminating on the basis of gender. Critics say trans girls violate Title IX because trans girls take opportunities away from cisgendered ones. What do you say to critics who might say, oh, you're you're cheating or you have an unfair advantage? I guess for them to, to like kind of do their research and to just further look into who transgender people are and like also what they go through, whether it be med medically or socially. And there is more to sports than, I guess, in my, my opinion, just winning a medal. This sends a horrible message to trans young people and their families that they're not welcome, that they're not safe. Trans people are scared. Their families are scared. Chase Strangio of the ACLU says this is just the latest battleground in the culture wars being waged, despite the fact that very few, if any, trans girls are openly competing in school sports. And it is deeply hurtful and harmful to the transgender young people who are constantly being scrutinized and attacked in this legislation, despite the practical realities which show that after decades of data, trans people are not dominating sports at any level, anywhere in the world. It's inappropriate. It's just not right. Heated debate unfolding across the country, like here in the Republican-dominated Missouri legislature, on whether to restrict trans athletes' ability to compete. That's your question? Yeah. Uh, Brandon Bulware. Yeah, I know you are. Yeah. Good to see you. Brandon Bulware is a father on a mission lobbying on behalf of his trans daughter. For years, um, 
I would not let my daughter wear girl clothes. I did not let her play with girl toys. His impassioned speech to Missouri lawmakers going viral on Twitter with more than 7 million views. I forced my daughter to wear boy clothes and uh, get short haircuts, play on boy sports teams. As a parent, we don't want to squash our kids' spirit. We don't want to ever silence that flame inside them. And looking back on it now, that's exactly what I was doing when I was forcing my daughter to be someone she wasn't. Nice to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. Raised conservative, a minister's son, now pleading with lawmakers to have compassion for trans children. Making the rounds, talking to as many of you as, as I can. But some don't want to hear it. You won't come out? No. Can't say I'm surprised. Thank you. You're frustrated. I'm very frustrated. This is real. This affects real people. At stake, Bulware says, is his trans daughter's very childhood. She gets the opportunity to be a kid. She, she gets the opportunity to participate on a sports team, to have fun, to play. That's nothing that should be denied to someone. Brandon's passion fueled by regret. I still have a fair amount of, of guilt over how I handled the situation early on. And um, it's part of the reason I do what I do now and advocate for her. There are certain folks in power that have decided that the new target is transgender kids. Kids. What I also know is that those efforts always fail. Hate and fear always fail and love wins. Now they may win a few battles, but love always wins the war. But many Missouri lawmakers say it's about fairness and the sanctity of the locker room, like Representative Doug Ritchie. What the focus of this bill is here in Missouri is to address the minors at the middle school, high school context for, um, you know, just protecting Title IX, you know, female athletics. Mr. Speaker, this bill protects our students. What do you say to folks who say that this bill is uh, anti-trans or, or transphobic? Well, uh, number one, it's not. Um, it is just, again, an effort to protect female athletics. Uh, in this context, in the middle school, high school context, as well as protecting our children who, when they're walking off the field, they're entering into that locked or shower uh, room with their teammates. Uh, and I think those concerns are legitimate. Uh, they wouldn't fall into a phobic uh, context. Some of your colleagues have said, you know, I don't want my granddaughter, you know, in a locker room with boys peeping in. Do not make my granddaughters go into a, a locker room and have to worry about a boy coming into their locker room. Do you know of any specific instances where that has happened? Well, you'd have to speak with them in terms of the, the individuals who are communicating those concerns. I haven't communicated those concerns myself. Because your critics would argue that this is a boogeyman that's being conjured up, um, that it's actually not actually happening. Well, again, you'd have to speak with them because that's not been a concern that I've voiced. The Missouri House bill could be passed by the end of the week. If approved, State Senator Greg Grazer says he'll fight against it. The majority party here in Missouri and nationally uh, likes to use these kind of hot button issues uh, when it comes to election time to, to get people riled up. Grazer is one of six openly LGBTQ members of the Missouri legislature and the only gay member in the Senate. I was once a closeted, scared, uh, suicidal teenager. I know what that feels like in this state. And an attack on LGBT kids and trans kids is an attack on all of us. This goes to a deep place in your heart, doesn't it? It does. It gets very personal. This issue is also personal for 14-year-old Avery Jackson, who graced the cover of National Geographic, proudly trans at just nine. I have always wanted to do things like volleyball and like dodgeball, but if these laws get passed, there's not really any point to doing that. There you go, okay. Avery has been homeschooled by her mother, Debbie Jackson, her entire life. She had been thinking about enrolling in a Missouri public high school next fall. So the laws are having what effect on that decision? Quite a big effect, whether it's bathroom, sports, or just denying the fact that if you go here, you can't be who you are. Is this really 
just about sports. Sports teaches leadership skills and goal setting. It's self-discipline. There are all these great skills that we need as humans to be successful later in life that you get from sports participation. One lawmaker's big concern was that somehow trans girls were merely boys pretending to be girls so that they could, you know, invade the locker room. What do you say to that? I think it's kind of ridiculous. Trans kids are very self-conscious of their bodies already, generally. They don't want to stand out as different, so they're not going to go in and get undressed in front of other people, and they're certainly not going in to uh, gawk at other people. We're humans, and we're just trying to live our lives. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.